Good, Dave Bigler. How are you? Good to see you. I'm doing well. I'm doing yeah. well. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. So uh, I know that we want to talk about weddings, but before we do that, I got to ask you, uh, you are super, super fancy and dapper today. Tell me, uh, tell me about this. Well, um, thank you. I appreciate it. The jacket I actually got from uh, Chapa and Sons. Uh, Tony called me up and uh, wanted to put some uh, uh, of our wedding prints up in his shop down in Albany. Uh, and went to me for him, which was really cool. And I said, well, you know what? Why don't you just hook me up with some trade? And I went down there and I found this really cool jacket that I had planned on wearing to a gala. I mean, that's uh, an amazing jacket. It's fun, right? And, and yeah. you got these matching ties and I got uh, quite a few different colors of the matching ties, but specifically the pink I am wearing because in the month of June, Saratoga Portrait Studio did a promotion for American Cancer Society's Real Men Wear Pink. And so what I wanted to do was be able to come on and, uh, um, you know, represent the real men wear pink, but also say thank you. So we had 16 different participants and we raised $1,600 towards American Cancer Society. So Andrew, Janice, Alan, Bev, Deanna, uh, Alyssa, John, Eleanor, John, Jarrell, Kate, Paula, Ange, Kate, Paula, and Denise. And I think I mentioned Paula twice, but there might have been two Paulas. Um, so thank you. Thank you all for, for donating. That was awesome. Nice, very nice. All right, so uh, sounds like a lot of fun, actually. It was fun. It was really neat. People came in and we just did portraits. We had three different people bring their dogs in. We did portraits of the dogs, which was fun. But yeah. you know, as op to open the doors of the portrait studio and to be able to have um, you know people come in and see us and, and et cetera, it was really nice. I enjoyed that. Nice, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, well, let's talk weddings, right? Yes. Uh, you know, obviously, crazy world out there right now. Um, what, what's, what's, from your point of view, as a wedding photographer, uh, one of the, some might say, the area's premier wedding photographer, right? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what would you say is going on in the industry right now? It's crazy. It's, it's really nuts. So um, the challenge that I face um, well, the tough thing that couples face, let's talk about from the couple's perspective. Um, things are opening back up, right? And we're able to have uh, gatherings of, of 50 or more, or no, excuse me, 50 or less. Um, but there's so many couples right now that just don't know. They don't know what's going to happen. And that's what the challenge is for them is let's say they have a wedding in October or November. The not knowing what's going to happen is, is killing them. You know what I mean? All their families know about asking, the parents are asking, and, and they're at this point where they're, they're being forced to make a decision. Um, and that really sucks for them because they, they have to decide, do I want to have a small wedding now or do I want to have the wedding I originally planned and just postpone it? Um, it's a really tough spot for them to be in. Now, now that being said, so that, that is unfortunate. And all couples that are planning their weddings for 2020 are facing that. But what I will say um, on the positive side, I have had so much fun doing these intimate weddings. Uh, I had one on Friday of last week, and then we did one at the Sagamore three weeks before that. And, you know, it's a dozen people or less. And the two that I've done thus far, have they did the full thing. So they got all dressed up, did hair and makeup, had us do photo um, and video for one of them, which is great. And I've got three more planned in the, in the coming five weeks. I've got three more that I'm doing. Uh, one's in a, a backyard in Clifton Park. One's at the Oda Saga. Um, and I honestly don't remember where the third one is, but I know I'm going to be there uh, for it. But those have been really nice. I've really enjoyed them because um, it's very laid back and the couples have fun and, you know, they still get married. Um, but the, the challenge, as I said before, is, is that people are, are really in a tight spot in deciding what they're going to do. It's, it, I don't think people realize, um, I mean, understandably in the spectrum of things to worry about, um, uh, a, a, a bride and groom planning their wedding is probably not that high, but you need to think about um, that no doubt this bride has been planning this day since she was three years old. And now all of a sudden this perfect day that she's been planning for so long and has had booked everything, has it all dialed in, can't happen the way she wanted it to happen. And it's, or they, it's a really tough spot that they're in. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, from, from a business standpoint, right? Cause you're a wedding photographer. This is what you do, right? This is how you make a living. It's how you put food on the table, pay your bills, you know, yeah. from that perspective, I mean, what, what light can you shed up on it for us? <laughs> from the business standpoint, this really sucks. Um, <laughs> it's really tough. It's really tough. Uh, this is why we did a headshot promotion in June. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it, why it was so successful and why I've uh, transitioned the business right now in the short term to focusing on headshots, which I love doing and I love doing portraits. They're a lot of fun and we have the new studio space, so it's great to do it. But I've had in the past week, I have had three inquiries that I couldn't shoot for 2021 because they are now occupied by couples that move their dates from 2020. So from a business standpoint, my plan was to downsize the number of weddings we were doing in 2021 uh, to a max of 30 weddings, right? Uh, two years ago, three years ago, we did around 50 to 60, but I had two photo teams and two video teams. And my plan was to downsize to just one team. That was the goal. That was the plan. Mm -hmm. And 2020 was going to be the last season that we were doing um, multiple teams, but we're already at 20 weddings for 2021. We're already at 20 weddings just simply because of the dates that have moved. So I don't think people uh, realize that from the wedding industry's perspective, everyone's saying, oh, 2021 is going to be amazing. 2021 is going to be horrible. And the reason why it's going to be horrible is that I'm going to be working a ton, but so I'm going to do uh, 2020 weddings and 2021 weddings, but I'm going to have the revenue of one year. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, Absolutely. So it, it's, uh, I'm happy for those weddings that we have. I'm happy for those weddings that, that book, but from a financial standpoint, I'm not going to be able to downsize for 2021 simply because I won't be able to, um, I need to bring in a certain amount of revenue to keep the system going. Yeah. So there's a break even point. So now that break even point has extended out. So it's good. I love the fact that we're, we're very busy and that our 2021 is filling up so quickly. But advice for those couples that are out there getting married right now or who are planning their weddings? Um, well, which do you want to hear first? The advice to those couples that have already, that were planning for 2020 and are trying to wait to decide what they're going to do that have their weddings in, let's say, mid-August to the end of 2020, or the advice for those couples that are planning their wedding and haven't booked a date yet, which do you want to hear first? Well, let's keep people on the edge of their seats. So let's do 2021 first, and then we'll come back to 2020. Book now. Book now. <laughs> if, are, uh, if you're going for 2021, and I like, I like putting them on the edge of their seats, if you are planning your wedding right now, um, and you want to do the big, elaborate, fun party, book the venue, book the photographer, book the DJ or the band now. Anything that is uh, dependent upon an individual who's, who's – um, schedule can pack up, book it. Uh, venue first, photographer second, DJ band third. Not to prioritize those, but just simply in how far out we book. We are booking, you know, our October of 2021 has two dates left in. Gotcha. It's nuts. It's nuts. So if you want the big wedding, that's my advice. Seal it in now. Now, the other things like your dress, you can wait on the dress. In fact, I would highly recommend that you wait on your dress so that you can get out of the COVID-15 uh, body that you, you know that have. But um, there's other, like florists, for example, can do multiple weddings in a day. So you have a little bit of time on that. They're still very important and critical, but it's not as critical as, like for me, I've only got one date available. And so once that's booked up, that's booked up. Interesting. All right, so let's, take people off the edge of the seats now. Let's, let's talk about 2020. Well, do you want the advice from um, the wedding photographer's perspective or from uh, a guy that's been married for 17 years? Uh, let's do both. Let's do wedding photographer first and then 17 year husband second. Okay, wedding photographer first. This is your day. If you can't have the day you wanted to have, postpone. If you can't have the, the, the day that you wanted that you've been planning for years and years and years, postpone the day because you can still do that. You can still have that elaborate wedding. And that's what we've had 15 couples 
uh, that have done that, that have postponed to 2021. Um, and you can still do that. Uh, the probability is, is that even if there's a second wave of COVID, um, postpone the date and postpone everything, and you can get the same day that you wanted, it's just you're going to have to wait a year. And that's okay. People are expecting okay. it. Let me, let me ask you this. So, uh, you know, I've been talking with uh, Melissa from SBM Event Co. You know, they're doing, and you, you've you been doing uh, a lot of what they're calling the mini moaning, right? The mini <laughs> doing a small ceremony now and then the elaborate wedding they were planning on next year you know what are your thoughts on that is that um yeah so you've been experiencing them firsthand i mean are they yeah. fun are they what can you say about those well i love them i love them the, uh this, well so there's two different sides of it is is that um the couple who which we have some of these planned where we're photographing they postponed their wedding to next year but they still hired us to do an hour or two of an intimate wedding and my advice on that, so let's say that you are still doing the big elaborate wedding in 2021, but you still want to get married and you're doing something small. My advice there is if you still want to have the big elaborate wedding, don't take away from it, which by that I mean, don't wear your dress. Wear something else, still look nice. You could do like a white cocktail dress, um, but don't make the, the real small intimate wedding don't let it steal the thunder from the big day. Because what will happen, and this is the challenge that couples will face, is they still want this day to be special, so they still do hair and makeup. They still do flowers, and they still mm -hmm. wear their dress. And what will happen then is, is that when it comes time for the, the big celebration, well, you already did some of those things, so it's going to lose its, its shine and its luster, so to speak. Watering it down a little bit, yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> on that note, the wedding we did at the Sagamore a few weeks ago, the bride's plan. So they were getting married down in Long Island. We weren't the, the photo or video, um, but they were getting married down in Long Island the very beginning of May. So everything got canceled on them, whether they wanted to postpone or not. And it was a tough situation. I don't know the whole story as far as that venue and what their situation was, but their plan was to postpone to 2021. But the bride still wanted to wear her dress and she still wanted to have, um, she had her sisters as her bridesmaids and we still did photos. She still did flowers. She did still did hair and makeup. Um, but a few weeks after, um, she texted me, she goes, Dave, I had so much fun. Thank you. We had a blast. We've made the decision to fully cancel the 2021 celebration because we had our wedding celebration and it was phenomenal they're still going to do something when they can as like a backyard barbecue and a celebration, but they, they realize that, wow, this was really cool moment. And that's kind of where I'm now going to transition to the husband, uh, uh, the guy who's been married for 17 years, which turning 40 this year doesn't make me feel old, but to be married for 17 years. <laughs> yeah. That makes me feel old. Um, but I have an amazing wife to, deal with me for 17 years um so my advice on that as far as the the married guy don't wait there's wedding vendors that are gonna hate that i say this the wedding vendors are gonna hate this that i say this but um don't wait get married don't postpone for another year um make it small make it intimate make it special um the most important thing from my perspective on a wedding day is is that you become man and wife and you become married or whatever the term is for today's times whatever um that, that at the end of the day you're married and and you are now one and you can start that life together so that that's not the the wedding vendor's perspective because the wedding vendor would say still do your full wedding that sixty thousand dollar wedding that you planned to do that Definitely do that. Spend the sixty thousand dollars. But the, the <laughs> husband would say, uh, and the wedding vendors are going to hate that I'm saying this. Is that um, you know what? You got thrown a curveball. Everybody got thrown a curveball. Yeah. Uh, if it were me in that situation, I'd still get married. I would have those people that are truly important to me there. I'd still do a celebration. I still would do that. But I wouldn't worry about all the hoopla and everything else. Uh, I would have a small, intimate beautiful wedding. I would spend the money and go someplace nice. And there's lots of venues that are doing specials for that yep. do it for people and, and still get married, you know, and still have that celebration. But there you go. That's my, that's my thought. It's my advice. That's, it's a good thought. It's good advice. So I appreciate it. Uh, you know, Dave, as always, thank you so much for 
being with us and everything that you do for the wedding industry and being the amazing photographer that you are. <laughs> and I really, think, I really do think that. I don't just say that. So. Well, I appreciate that occasionally I see these little uh, chickens that are walking around the back, the back of the <laughs> yeah. yeah, but over your right shoulder, you can see them. There's two of them there. There's a, how many hens do you have? We have 23 on the property right now. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, they're, they just free range. They just walk around. They are, uh, they're fun to watch. They are characters. And we're getting about a dozen eggs a day right now, uh, which is a little crazy. Uh, we're well, just- can I- giving them away. So if you would like some fresh farm eggs, Dave, uh, I'm your guy. And uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, okay. enjoy the farm and uh, thank, you. Um, thank you for everything that you're doing yeah. um, with the website and for helping to uh, promote um, wedding vendors, et cetera. Um, yeah, it was good chatting with you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for arranging this and uh, thanks for your time. You got it. Thanks, Dave. Talk to you later, Mike. Cheers.